Welcome to St. George's Online Service for this Sunday, November 8th. Today we celebrate Remembrance Day, all souls in the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Let us begin. On this day of remembrance for the souls of those who served in war and those that we have loved and lost, may the peace of God be with us all. And also with you. We sing of your glory, we praise you again, for you are eternal. Amen. Amen. We sing of your power and honor again, for you are eternal. Amen. Amen. Glory in the highest, honor sing again. Glory, alleluia, amen, amen. The College for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Father of all, we pray to you for those we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. These are the people of this parish who have served our country in armed conflict. World War I. Frank Bill, W. Charlton, G. Colas, A. Cowling, Roy Ellington, D. Gray, S. Harrison, A. Rolf, S. Rolf, B. Rolf, W. Rolf, W. Smythe, George Stokes, B. Street, A. Watson. World War II and Korea. Frank Bill, Grace Bill, Russell Commons, Vernon Colson, Lyle Dales, Wesley Dice, Hugh Gassel, William Gassel, Charles Harris, Stanley J, Hubert Jarrett, Ralph Lillycrop, Orville Mitchell, Lionel Muddle, Carl Patterson, Thomas Patterson, Maurice Powell, 
Roy Powell, David Slingsby, Mac Twist, Ben Walton, Joe Paul, Ken Dixon. Merchant Seamen and Lady Knitters. Please join me in a short silence to remember them and all those whom we have loved and who have died. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Rest eternal, grant to them, Lord, loved ones whom we see no more, that with all the host of heaven they may know Perpetual shine upon them, may thy mercies never cease, and the souls of all departed by thy gracious blessings ever rest in peace. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no, no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. The Word of the Lord. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of Christ. catchphrase for Remembrance Day, which we're celebrating today, is lest we forget. We remember all those who lost their lives in wars long ago or more recent, and those who served in them. And in Canada, we remember especially those who sacrificed themselves, as they made themselves holy, in the war of uh, 1914 to 1918. Because it's an important part of our nation-building mythology. It changed Canada from being a mere colony to becoming an independent nation. But that makes our remembering just a little bit tricky. 
because in some people's minds it leads to the glorification of past conflicts. Now personally I tend to focus on the lost and shattered lives that resulted from wars. And that's reflected in our two hymns this morning. We opened with, O God of power, O, o God of love, O power of peace, make wars through all the world to cease. And we're going to finish with, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I can't emphasize enough my gratitude that I and my children have been spared military service in conflict. And therefore, lest we forget, has two meanings for me. We remember those who offer themselves in the service of their country, but they also, and we mustn't forget this, made possible the freedoms that we have today. But lest we forget is also a very fragile flower, reminding us that peace is fragile. We must pray and sing to God to make wars through all the world to cease, because that's because deadly conflicts exist elsewhere in this world as I'm speaking. Perhaps the worst of them are civil wars, as Margaret Macmillan wrote in an, uh, an article in the Globe and Mail last month. In our times, we can think of civil wars in Rwanda, the former Yugoslavia, in Syria, in Libya. And civil wars are tragic because they pit citizen against citizen, family against family member. Lifelong friends become mortal, in the literal sense, enemies. These enemies are very hard to erase when the fighting ceases. Macmillan wrote that the American Civil War has been the most destructive of wars in the whole of the American uh, history. Because more than 150 years ago, the scars are still not healed. Confederate flags and statues still arouse passions. Black racism still infects the United States. And the American Civil War caused more deaths than all of the subsequent wars that America has been involved in. The identity politics in which the other side becomes demonized as inherently evil is a slippery slope, she writes, which can lead to civil war if it's left unchecked. Our neighbors to the south are in a dangerous moment at this time. <clears throat> the wrath of human sin restrain. Give peace, O God. Give peace again. On a less somber note, we're also, also celebrating All Souls Day today. And that particular, lest we forget, focuses on family members and friends who've departed this life ahead of us. The Book of Wisdom, which we just heard read, tells us that it's unwise to think that their end, their death, was a disaster. No, their hands are in the souls of God, God has not forgotten them, and neither should we. Colonel John McRae's famous poem in Founders Fields, which John read to us, echoes the same theme. <clears throat> Short days ago, his friends loved and were loved, but now they lie in Flanders' fields. Yet he's not forgotten them. The wild poppies of northern Europe blow in the fields of Flanders in northern France. Even in the beautifully manicured military cemeteries, the wild poppies sneak in. They remind us that even in the remembrance of death, life cannot be denied a core belief of our Christian faith. I want now to turn to today's Gospel. The parable comes from a tradition in biblical times. A bridegroom and his family came to the bride's home during the evening to begin the marriage feast. The bride and her bridesmaids well waited to welcome them with lighted lamps. But I read somewhere that this tradition still continues today in some Palestinian villages. In Jesus' story, some of the bridesmaids forgot to fill their lamps with oil. When the bridegroom's arrival was announced, their lamps had gone out, so they couldn't join the welcoming party. By the time they'd gone to get more oil, the, way, the party was underway, and they were locked out. Of course, who can forget that wonderful translation of the King James Version? Will you wake with the wise virgins, or will you sleep with the foolish virgins? What a choice to put before devout young Christian men. But back to the script. <clears throat> we can never know how Jesus or Matthew meant us to interpret this parable. The parable in, in, illustrates the first century Jewish concept that the end of the age was near. Everyone must prepare for Judgment Day. 
In this explanation, Christ is the bridegroom. The bridesmaids are Christian believers. They're waiting for the second coming. Some are ready, some are not, to join the marriage feast in the age to come. The second coming was a big deal when Matthew wrote his gospel. You'd better always have your bags ready to leave for the afterlife. But I don't meet many Christians who go to bed in the evening these days wondering if it'll all be over by morning. So does that make the parable of the ten bridesmaids irrelevant to us today? I think perhaps not, because there's another strain of thought that runs through the Gospels, and I've spoken of it many times. Jesus said the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven had drawn near. In this model, Christ the bridegroom has arrived already. That gives us a different explanation. The parable says, keep awake. Be ready to remake the world as we believe that God would have it be. A society of justice, fairness, peace, where there's enough for everyone and no one is left out. However, are we, the bridesmaids, ready for this task? There's a song based on this parable. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. The song asks for the enthusiasm to do Christ's work in this world. In today's context, that includes being peacemakers. So I end with many different senses of lest we forget. We remember with gratitude those who served in wartime. We remember the fact that they gave us this opportunity for peace in our time. We remember with love the friends and family members who've loved but we see no more. And finally, we remember that we need not wait for the second coming because Jesus the bridegroom has already arrived. Let's not forget that. The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. So I'm going to sum it up in the words of our closing hymn. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Amen. Please join me as we pray for forgiveness. Loving God, we confess that we are often quick to judge or do or say things in anger that we later regret. We ask you for help to curb our destructive impulses, which can lead to rupture of relationships on a personal level or to conflict and war when they are carried out by nations. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who said to us, my peace I give to you. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, today on this Remembrance Sunday, our hearts are conflicted. We live in a peaceful country, but in a world where conflict is still so prevalent. Today we remember all those who've given their lives, their health, or their loved ones, that we may live in peace. And we look forward with hope, and yet with trepidation, to a future that may be pregnant with possibilities, or where conflict remains prevalent. And so we say, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. We thank you for this world, this fertile and beautiful world, home to one human family. We all sleep beneath one roof, the starry sky. We all warm ourselves at one hearth, the blazing sun. 
upon one floor of soil we stand, and we breathe one air and drink one water. We all walk the night beneath one luminescent moon. May we never forget that we are the children of one God. We are brothers and sisters of one blood and members in your worldwide family. So let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Remembering our unity in you, may we and all your creation work for peace. We pray for peace between countries and within nations, tribes and communities for peace between friends and within families, and for peace in the heart of each of your children. We bring before you today those known to us who are in difficulties and who need your blessing. Some have asked for our prayers, some are heavy in our hearts, some are known only to you, and we remember them today. Holy One, you came to turn the world upside down, to usher in the kingdom of God. Show us how we can be instruments to make this kingdom come closer. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Today in your presence we remember. We remember and thank you that you walked in solidarity with the suffering. When the lights went out in two world wars and in many other conflicts, when millions died in foul trenches or mass genocide, when six million died in gas chambers, when many died and still die from acts of terror or revenge, you are there. We mourn for the goodness and wisdom that died with them, for the skill and wit that perished, the learning the laughter and the leadership that were lost. The world has become a poorer place and our hearts become cold as we think of the splendor that might have been. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. But today isn't only a time for remembering the past. It's also a time for thinking about the present and looking to the future. We come to you seeking forgiveness for our part in bringing friction and discord into the world. Thankful in the knowledge that your forgiveness is willingly given. We come to you hoping for a more peaceful world. We pray for the leaders of nations at this time, asking you to pour out your spirit of reconciliation on them. We pray for the people of this world who have had terrorist attacks recently, Vienna, France, and so many places. May the longing for peace and freedom, freedom from fear and want, outweigh the desire for wealth and nationalistic grandeur. May the whole world join with us in saying, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And so as we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. We ask these prayers as always, in Jesus' name, amen. We conclude our prayers by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty our creating father and mother Jesus our brother and guide and the animating Holy Spirit be with you all today and always. Amen. <laughs>